This is the new Nissan Qashqai. Now I say new, it's more of an extensive facelift because they've redesigned the front end. I think it's been slightly modelled on one of these. It's sort of flat and squat and it's, it's also got a bit of an underbite. Like there, look at this. So anyway, the price of this car starts from £22,000. If you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk and compare offers now. Nissan has made some changes here on the inside of the Qashqai. The most noticeable is this, the new steering wheel, and it is really nice. There's some other changes as well around the cabin. Not entirely sure what they are, because it looks very, very similar to me. And yeah, you've got soft touch material, so the quality is okay, but it just all seems a little bit not that exciting, really. So in terms of trim levels, you don't want the two entry level cars, because they don't get this larger infotainment screen, and you do want that. You get on the end connector model and above, and the end connector gets stuff like you know climate control, but some other niceties such as keyless entry. You also get surround cameras, look at that. Rear parking sensors and 18 inch alloy wheels. This particular car is actually a new trim level. It's a very posh version called the Tecna Plus because Nissan reckons that people want their SUVs with as much kit as possible. And this has things like Nappa leather seats with this quilting effect. It also comes with a Bose sound system, but it's very, very expensive. It's over 30,000 pounds, this car. So a hmm, bit too expensive, wouldn't go for that. Now let's move on to the infotainment system. I've already mentioned it. To use, it's, it's okay. So you've got these, physical shortcut buttons, which I find nice and easy to use while you're driving. The rest of the infotainment system is fairly logical, not too difficult to navigate through. The problem for me is that it's it's a little bit slow to respond at times. Yep. Yeah. And the graphics, look at them. They're, they're all just a little bit dull. Now, if you click it there, you can see my full in-depth video review of the infotainment system and having another look around the car's cabin. In terms of cubby spaces, they're all right. Look, I can fit a big bottle just about in the door bins because of the way they're designed. They're thin towards the back. There's enough space at the front of them. You've got decent storage under here. Look, there we go. It's nice and deep and there's auxiliary in and a charging point there. There's another 12 volt charging point there. Some more storage here. A couple of cup holders and a glove box, which is best described as all right. In terms of the back of this car. so. One of the problems with the Nissan Qashqai has been that compared to similar SUVs, it's always felt a little bit tight in the back. So knee room, it, that's all right. Foot space, it's okay as well. The issue is headroom, especially if you go for the panoramic sunroof. So me, I've just about got, look, I can just about fit my hand in between the head and the roof. Now, if you go for a car without that glass panoramic sunroof, headroom is slightly better. So take that into consideration if you're thinking about getting this car. Carrying through in the back, it's not great. You've got this hump in the floor, so it does eat into foot space. And then look, can you see now? Look, my head is touching the roof line there. It's not brilliant with three in the back. Something like a Ford Cougar does feel a bit more spacious with three in the back at once. Other items to know, yeah, you've got your standard armrest, couple of cup holders. Not too exciting, really. So let's move on to the boot. Maybe it's more exciting there. I've got a feeling it's not going to be. Actually, I may be wrong because Nissan has also redesigned the rear end of this car. It's not as extensive as the changes at the front, but it does look neater than before. What they haven't changed though is the size of the Qashqai's boot. So it's not really that much bigger than a Volkswagen Golf, and obviously that's a smaller car. When you compare this boot size to things like the Volkswagen Tiguan, it is a bit lacking in the old size department. What I can't complain about is that there's no load lip to lift things over, so it's quite easy to slide your suitcase in and out. And I do like this feature. You've got this configurable boot partition, so you can partition it like that. You've got some extra storage under there. If you're wondering what's under this bit here, it's, yeah, it's your phone for your tire repair stuff. So when I fold the seats down, which I can do from up here, so it's not too difficult to do from the boot. Look, you've got a completely flat floor, so it's easy to slide items into the front. Now you can't do that on a Ford Cougar. So that is good. Now, if you want more information on this car's practicality, so much stuff you can actually cram into this car's boot, click up there to watch my detailed video on that. You'll be able to see how easy it is to fit a child seat in this cash car and what it's like with three adults in the back. Now, where's my dog? Right then, that's the practical stuff dealt with. Now it's time to hit the road. As well as all the visual changes to the Qashqai, Nissan has tried to make it more comfortable to drive. So they've softened the suspension slightly. It still does that thing that it used to do where they break the front wheels and the back wheels as you go over a bump to smooth it out. And does it feel more comfortable than before? Just hit a pothole there. It's absolutely fine. So around town, it's very easy to drive. 
the light steering helps, as does the good visibility, so there's not too many annoying blind spots getting good view out the front and you sat up, obviously. The back window is a decent size for an SUV. Sometimes they can be a bit small, surprisingly enough, and there's an extra little quarter light at the back, which just lets you peer through if you're pulling out at junctions. One thing to note, though, is that while the gear shift is lovely and precise, the brakes are just a little bit too grabby. I mean, you just touch them and you're like doing an emergency stop. And that can be really annoying around town. Like, and again, it's, ugh, it starts making you feel a little bit sick. As you head out onto the motorway, you may feel the benefit of one of the other improvements Nissan has made to this car. So they've added extra soundproofing to make it quieter at speed. And it's actually pretty good. So you're cruising along at 70 miles an hour, you don't get too much tire roar. What you do notice is a little bit of wind whistle from the big wing mirrors, but it's not too annoying at all. It's absolutely fine. You can cruise for hours in this and it's perfectly relaxing and comfortable. If you're going to be doing lots of motorway miles, you don't want the 1.2 litre turbo petrol, although it's okay round town. The 1.6 litre turbo petrol is a lot better and it's quite punchy, but if you're doing, you know, covering over 10,000 miles a year, you probably want one of the diesels. This is the 1.5 litre diesel and it's a really good engine. It's smooth, it's reasonably quiet. The claimed economy is 74 miles per gallon that I'm getting. 53. Don't get the 1.6 litre diesel because it's more expensive and even though it has more power it doesn't actually feel that much quicker when you're driving it. Also if you want you can get this car with four-wheel drive but it's not really worth the extra cash. You might want the automatic gearbox as well but I'm not a big fan of it. It's, it's not one of the best autos you can get. The cash car does a decent enough job when the road gets a little bit twisty, such as this. So as you go around a corner, it nibbles the inside brakes, gets the car turning, but it doesn't turn it into a sports car. It still feels like a soft, squidgy SUV. You know, if you want an SUV that's a bit more fun to drive, a Seat Etica does feel sharper. In fact, a Peugeot 3008 feels a bit sharper, and that's mainly due to the steering on this cash car, which is it's like that, look, I'm still going straight. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because it grips in a corner as well as you need it to. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. The release button for the boot is actually just this small area there, which can be a little bit awkward to hit when you're maybe talking to someone or got hands full of baggage. You look, you're like that, and then eventually you get it. The reversing camera picture is just so low definition that it's as though you're looking at things from underwater. I'm over here. I don't know the way the bonnet brace goes from the top downwards rather than the other way around because if you drop it like that, it's all a bit more difficult to do than the other way around. Why do it like that? I don't know why, but Nissan didn't bother to put a little tag on there for you to grab the rear armrest, fold it down. So you have to shove your finger in and then the kind of scuffs the cuticles. Some cars have their parking sensors seamlessly integrated into the bumper. This cash car, however, has them in these weird, cheap feeling appendages. Hmm. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The Qashqai has these little pointy triangular vortex generators to smooth airflow under the car for added aerodynamics and improved efficiency. Now, can I push myself up? Oh! You'll be able to get the cash car with active cruise control, which will keep you a safe distance from the car in front. And it also have lane keeping assist to steer to keep you in lane. This car doesn't have it, but fortunately, I have an assistant to do that for me. The new cash car is available with auto city braking with pedestrian detection. Maybe one day they'll upgrade it to have French bulldog detection as well. It's really handy that you can store the parcel shelf underneath the false boot floor keeps it out of the way when you're not using it. With the hill hold control, it will actually hold the car on an incline with you in neutral for ages. I think it does it for three minutes. So I could sit there, look, three minutes, like my feet, they're not on the pedals. When it's finally time to drive away, you just put it into gear and voila. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there or on the link below the video, you can go to carwow.co.uk to compare offers on the new Nissan Qashqai. So then, what's my verdict on it? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Nissan Qashqai. It may not be the biggest SUV, but it's a really good all-rounder. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and subscribe to our channel. Click on the window to watch our detailed infotainment and practicality video reviews 
for the Nissan Qashqai. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the picture of the cash cow, get it? Cash cow, cash cow, and the car's got a box.